I've written a book about a different Michelangelo. It's still the same guy, Michelangelo Buonarroti, Florentine architect, painter, sculptor, poet. But it's not the Michelangelo who produced things like the David, the Moses, the Sistine Ceiling. It's the Michelangelo who produced things for his eyes only. So the book, which is called Michelangelo, A Life on Paper, is about that life. It's about really about his interior life. The things that he put together when his mind was wandering and his hand was wandering and words popped into his head or drawings seeped out of his pen. He did all kinds of different things on the same sheets of paper. Memos to self, lists for foods and expenditures and monies, all mixed in with drawings that range from doodles to uh, sublime figure sketches. But the other thing we have is that we have some intense, private, passionate remarks. On this sheet, he writes, La voglia in voglia e poi lascia la doglia. Desire engenders desire and then leaves pain. And next to it, he writes, death is the end of a dark prison. But in the midst of this, he has contracts, he has angry statements, and he uh, also draws a, a large rather ungainly hand, and two very long extended bodies. We have these sheets with completely incongruous and unrelated fragments on them. And for me, these sheets of paper, with their quite bizarre and mysterious mixtures of words and images, are very, very much like dreams. Really the kind of dream that Freud analyzed, in which uh, there are strange, unexpected juxtapositions, juxtapositions that if you look carefully and think carefully about the whole life of the subject, whether that's a subject in an, uh, on an analytic couch or a subject who is uh, reclining as he paints the Sistine ceiling, if you look carefully at these mysterious, seemingly disconnected utterances, you have a sense of what Freud would call Michelangelo's unconscious. Thank you.